Hello everyone. This is Amber Eight Two Thousand here. Welcome to my channel. Well, I play a variety of games and do new releases for fanfics. I'm really hoping you you enjoy my content. If you do, make sure to comment below. Leave a like. And subscribe with the lower case and so on. But until next time, this is Amelie2000. Welcome to my channel. So, hi. Welcome to Death Row Chapter 6 A Memory of Light. Before we start, there's a note here. I am going to read it. There is a sexual assault in this. Feel willing to people that are sensitive to that. So there are, this chapter does contain that. And in quote quote, it was some of the toughest writing he ever opposed is in this chapter. But there was a method to the madness. So there's a reason why he did this. There's a reason. Anyways, I just started with the chapter. So much had happened earlier in the day that Matt was almost too overwhelmed to care about her mom popping in for a surprise to visit. She figured that the trip from Seattle to France would take a hurried drive around 12 hours. She figured this trip if you add in stuff for gas using the restroom and grabbing a, a couple of bites to eat, one could easily spend 14 or 15 hours on the road. Her arrival must have been ur ur important, even urgent, for her to be there at, at that moment. An orderly yet s similar set of masses on Blue's eyes still back into hers. Alternating between the left and the right, a heavy silence fell between the mother and daughter pair as they did join each other in the living room. So, Mass began as she lifted her vision and pointed her hand out from between her mom's. Kaya Bay, you need to tell me. Gosh, I don't really remember much. I was just a young teen then. Have you been taking your meds, sweetheart? You're trying to act like you, what little, act a, a little like you did before. Actually, it's funny you ask. I just stopped taking them today. Koi said I should quit because before she could finish her thoughts, she was interrupted. Chloe, wait! When did you speak with Chloe? Her voice slightly forward, then cracking seemed a bit more intense than before. You really need to take your pills. You have no idea how bad things were f for you before. The prisoner, the one I'm view interviewing, see special, Mom. I don't expect you to understand, but some way she knows me. I have to figure out how. Wait a minute. The young woman stood to her feet and turned to face her still sitting mother who was looking back at her. What do you mean? How bad things were before? Before when? Jeez. Before? What's that even mean? Vanessa sighed. We tried so hard to keep you safe. I suppose... You easily figure it out again, but your dad? She paused and stood from the couch, taking me a few steps towards the opposite wall. The back now turned towards the interior of the room. He, he thinks bad things are on the horizons. Your maids are very important, sweetie. She looked over her shoulder, then back down towards her feet. Mom. What are you keeping me safe from? 
How the hell did you drive all the, all this way? It doesn't make any sense. Tell me, please. Master marched over to her mother's location and placed a palm on her nearest shoulder. She thought she could heard a slightly muffled little whimper, so she withdrew her hands and set backwards a couple of paces to give up the women more space. The odor of the pale, briskly shuffled around. The wet in her eyes shimmering when Esther glossed that wasn't there briefly. Pass, my street girl. Who are keeping you, you safe from yourself? From myself? What? But, but why? Or, um, I just, I, I don't. I don't understand. She was having a hard, tough time occurring her thoughts, but she figured her point was understood at least. Crossing both of her daughter's hands, Vanessa pulled in close and locked eyes with her daughter once again. Master turned the gray, slightly shifted, so confused. I'm so torn. The way you were before, after. She swallowed hard, and then continued. The accident. I just don't know if you're ready to open that door again. As we were hoping we could disguise your room to the point of you not even knowing it was there. Your father, I don't think it's best for you to dig too deeply. No need to to tell open old rooms. What the fuck, mom? Stop speaking in riddles. Just tell me. Fine. After she died, you were completely numb. Your eyes were open, but you couldn't see. Hell, you barely spoke to anyone. At least not for a while. You were treated to some far corner of your mind to be alone with your grief, I guess. It was some sort of of how you acted after William passed, but modified a thousand times. We assume it was just your way of dealing with the pain of death. We didn't even know you still cared about her. If I'm being honest, I mean, she was your best friend when you were kids. You two haven't spoken in years. Then, after about a week, you started taking Fucking this crazy nonsense about going back in time. Who is she? Chloe's in prison, Mom. Not d dead. A very pre-elbow movement shook the room, but only for a second. Mass moved her eyes from one side to the other, setting the walls for the source. She looked towards her mother who apparently hadn't heard nor felt what she had. Vanessa killed her phone and, to, and took in a deep and pronounced breath. She seemed to be preparing for something big and her nervousness t to open up to her daughter was clear. It's Chloe, Mass. Chloe Price. She was murdered at Blackwell. Mass is bringing hits. And a series of timbers tended to shake and wobble the ceiling and walls. Cause you're my partner in time. Fuck! He drew the soapy form began pressing through the faces between tremors, bearing the women staring her to the floor. From her back, Mass walked upward, only seeing what appeared to be a thick, firmy fog. Apparently, the look of like summer took form, forming into a countless number of tiny slugs. She ultimately attempted to push the bubbles away from her face, seeking a quill breath of air like she'd been buried underneath an avalanche. As she struggled to breathe, one bubble pop in the light of previously contained inside twisted around like a vortex of water. Pulling mass inside, she forced her eyelids together tightly in response. Our refresh and the world went black. As she quickly 
As she closed her eyes, she opened them again, finding herself laying in bed. The panic that she experienced moments ago vanished from her mind. Just like the appointment. So it was in a split second before. The sense of clean, mostly built bottles and cigarette smoke filled her nostrils and she felt a confident way of happiness rolled throughout her body. She shred her eyes up, upward and over, noticing a American flag casually ruffling in the breeze that was slowly drifting in through an open window. Mass drove her head to the opposite side and noticed she was waking up beside a blue-haired girl in a bed she didn't recognize. Wait a minute. I can't move. Like watching a movie from a first-person point of view, the scene played out with Mass experiencing everything but not controlling any of it. She severed her weight and then reached down and picked up her old paranoid. Always remember this moment. Did I just think that? She so holds the camera up and out, arm extended, prepping to take a selfie. She so preferred to be behind a camera, but something about what she was feeling felt a nostalgic and warm. Photo bomb! The girl she fought was asleep beside her, called out, jumping up and into the slot. Fogo hog! Ask where he responded, pressing the button in and stopping the pistol. Holy shit! That's the prisoner! That, that's Chloe! So many two folding hands appeared from Mildred, grabbed Mask by the shoulders, and pulled her over in front of four. After rubbing her eyes and shaking her head to quell the fuzziness, she noticed her mom staring down at her with a dreadful look of concern polluting her face. Mass, are you okay? Oh, God! I knew this was a bad idea. She was crunching down, hovering over her daughter with both arms, now propping pup herself up. Mom? Still woozy from the floors. Fall to the floor. Mass felt, Mass felt for the coffee tail and spread over, pulling up to her knees. Yeah, I'm here. Maybe you should talk in the morning, Mass. Your face is fresh. Looks like you just seen a ghost. I think Sweet would do us both good. This conversation is too asking for you right now. Probably for me, too. Y yeah. Mass responded. A little disordered and weary. That's a good idea. The women help each other up for the floor and got away the such sleeping arrangements. Mass offered her mom the cows. There was no way she was going to give up her own bed. After gathering spilled branches in the pillow from the small ha hallway closet, the older woman decided on a, on a sour. The younger Caulfield sold her will as her towels were located and then gave Vanessa her privacy. My snuggled into bed and almost immediately drifted off to sleep. And most night, she dreamt, dreamt though really recalled any specifics. She had several reoccurring dreams, but she couldn't remember exact details. For she awoke, one involved a classroom somewhere that she didn't fully recognize with her classmates staring at her while she didn't know an answer to a question the teacher asked. Another involved driving, driving during a storm intently focused on arriving to a destination of, of utmost important, importance. She never made it where she was going, but she knew she listed the car at some point to help others who were in trouble. When the chirping of the alarm clock on her nightstand alerted her to begin getting ready for the day, she felt thankful she swept through the night while a single dream. For a brief spell, she forgot about the events of the previous day. She just knew she had to get moving on so she wouldn't be late for work. Rolling out of bed and, and placing two feet on the floor, Mass turned her head around as he yawned in stress. 
But her gaze landed on a middle-aged woman asleep in the living room. That's outside her bathroom door. Her heart felt as if it drifted, as if it drifted, a few inches down her chest. Shit. I gotta see Chloe. A profound and intensive urge quickened her pace the next half hour. Soured, dared her hair and makeup. Push her, her teeth and then grab some fresh fruit from the fridge. In her haste, she intently neglected to make herself a cup of coffee. Quickly ensuring her mom wouldn't wake and delay her departure with unwanted conversation. Unlike Master typical routine, caffeine wasn't something she cared much about at the present time. She needed to deal with Weston, maybe have a word or two with Maria, and quickly get to the prison to continue where she left off the prior day. She couldn't get her mind off of that girl. A prisoner on death row that for some reason Chloe occupied mass farts like the primal curving of her intestines. The feelings weren't like having to take her meds, or even a morning jolt or coffee, or caffeine. They were more intoxicating, and she passively needed to be in the girl's presence once again. The first barrier healing Master's path was her boss. He insisted her he instructed her to kiss him up on yesterday's encounter, first day in the morning. The battery wanted to sip going to the office and had straight towards Chloe, but she needed to appease him first. The followers worried that Weston would make a call to the warrant and end their arrangement if she didn't do what he wanted. With fruit and bag and tow, Matt exited the apartment and hop in her vehicle. She didn't slam the door, but slowly closed it, managing to create a, as little as possible, little noise as possible. She cranked the engine and backed out of the parking spot nearest her apartment entrance, the one she had claimed as hers. Since moving to the apartment, she went to the same spot as she Park. And it seemed to be common knowledge among the other residents that the space now belonged to her. The commute flew by and she was pulling into the Francis Harris pothole with a parking lot in no time. Hundreds of thoughts rattled around in her head and she couldn't seem to derive her main focus from the prisoner. As she removed her keys and tossed them in her bag, as her eyes trailed from the listen to her sassel, they caught a glimpse of the pill she left in her, in her middle console the evening before. As she stared at the bottle, she realized her desire to consume her meds had been replaced with childlike assignment to be around Chloe again. Even though she didn't understand why, she grazed in the mirror and took a moment to stare into her, into her own eyes. What's wrong with you, Mass? All you can think about is that prisoner, that Chloe, my Chloe. The same waves of energy passed through her, and she felt as if she'd been in the sack back spot at some point previously. These are real, I guess. She shook it off and twisted around, exiting the car and making her way towards her workplace entrance. And as post the steps, Maria nearly knocked her down, running out of, of the building. Sorry, gotta go, Mass. She paused for a couple of seconds to address her colleague. Your ass better fill me, fill me in with what happened at the prison yesterday. You're not off the hook, girl. The seasoned Georgiorist smiled and turned back towards the parking lot, resuming her quick in place, disappearing in the distance as she entered her vehicle. Mass opened the door to her workplace and quickly walked directly to her cubicle. The scent of freshly brewed coffee was trailing from the break room area, enticing her to follow the smell. She craved the cup, but her desire to get on with her day trumped everything else. 
sat her back down and finally on her computer. Asked her side of the go ahead and meet with Weston. More so to just get it over with. She wasn't afraid of the man. She only knew he wasn't very happy with her. As she proceeded, proceeded towards her boss's office, the man stepped out and stuck his head. Sit, Mass! You're way too new to come and go as you damn well please. What the fuck happened that made you what, press the panic button? Weston stepped to the side, swinging his ascended arm and open palm towards the doorway. Mass followed his to Weston and stepped inside. She turned back towards the entrance and watched as the man shut the door behind him. It surprised the girl when she noticed him press in and turn the middle button on the handle, locking them inside together. Did he just lock the door? Listen, Mass. The brain mask began stepping directly towards her. She tiptoed away as he kneel, kne drew nearer, finally stopping with her back against the front side of his desk, slightly bent backwards. He snatched both of her hands from her sides and pulled them in his own. What are you doing? I know how much this case means to you. I heard... Uh, on death row, wouldn't have asked for you without specific reason. Mass attempted to move her hands, wiggling them and pushing, pulling away. But the man's grip tightened as he really she wouldn't be able to get free. Some way, you two are tied together, whether you know it or not. You're hurting my hands, Weston. You need to learn that I'm in charge around here, not you. I fucking scream, but you don't let go. Okay, that's fine. Then you never see that bitch again. You can kiss your girl goodbye. Fuck you, man. Oh, that's exactly what you're gonna do. Well, maybe not all the way, but everyone has to prove himself to me. You're no expectation. The man spun must around and tightly hold her face from behind. Arms firmly wrap around her... Her powered body, she could feel the man's breath on her skin as he sniffed her neck. Hmm, this smells good this morning. Fuck, fuck, fuck! No, this can't be happening! From behind and down below, she could hear the jingle of pants unbuckling and a boat being on crafts. All you gotta do is go down, Mass. It's not hard. The man chuckled. Well, it's definitely getting hard. Fuck! Mass felt the tails of a warm liquid cascading down her cheeks as she, the tails she was holding back wouldn't be denied food. She was helpless, and if she wanted to see Chloe again, she knew what her boss was requiring her to do. I can't! Oh, you fucking will! When he says no to me, Best we not some tie bits who thinks he's special. Go away from me, psycho! Who butterfly? Mass put a sorry mixture of fear, anger, dismay, and rage boil up from his side. She suddenly found the swing to push away. One quick action, she kicked the man between his legs by lifting her foot up off the ground and thrusting it back and upward at the knee. Fuck! Weston grimaced, falling towards the ground. I saw an opportunity to get away and ran towards the door. Stressing her arms out and grasping the handle. Because of the sweat and that had formed a thin layer layer on her hands, she clumsily fitted it with the lock, unable to get it open. Almost instantly, she felt her hair being pulled at, pulled as her boss had two coarse fists, finished deeply wounded and nearly to her salt. Mass whipped up and grabbed both of his wits with her left and right hands, seeking to disrupt his grip. Her effort was tribal tri as he was yanked backwards into the floor, swinging back as quickly as possible. The brunette found herself caught up 
and that in the far corner with her is also hovering over her. You're gonna pay for that, Bess. The man seemed like a where we be the animal. So I was dripping from his lips. I'm gonna enjoy this. All in a sign, in one hand gripped the girl by the throat and hit her from the ground, while the other was brought up in a fist, preparing to strike. As the palm was on its way towards her, her head, Master stood at her arm. No! Fire of energy spot from her palm, brewing the world from her vision. A pursuing brass warp and distorted reality as she witnessed the last ten minutes speed past her in reverse. Before she knew it, she was sitting in her chair, staring at her own reflection. Whoa! What the fuck? Mass woke around nervously. H how can that be? I was just in that asshole's office. He attacked me. I hold up my hand, and I was back here. Shit! The front door to the front door her but busted open, and mass witness Maria sprint out, jump into, uh, jump in her car, and speed out of the parking lot. Did I? Rewind time? Okay, I see you're a geek now with great matters, but this isn't anime or a video game. People don't have those powers, Mass. Oh, fuck! Chloe! Turn it off. October 11th, 2014. <coughs> Sorry about that. October 11th, 2014. Holy shit! Like a spilled can of pa red paint, a pool of a, a, a hostily concealed blood powdered on the floor near where she now stood in the back row bathroom. Though alarming in its own right, it was the blood that caught Chloe's attention. Residing on the opposite side of the gathered solid goo, a beautiful blue butterfly held its position. Fighting her, her, her wings a couple of times, the way the insect's tiny head mobsly came forward, it appeared to be staring up and directly at Chloe. She grazed back through stricted eyes, observing its unearthly wings that illuminated the four beneath, and an undeniable urge filled through the emotion filled a girl's body. Luring her towards the Melissa being that was presenting itself before her. She slowly stretched out her arm, making a careful approach to not step in the puddle between them, and fold her fingers into a, a bald fist, bringing her partner out for a pelt, like a trained animal to its owner call. The butterfly took flight, landing on Chloe's ascended finger. As soon as it landed, in a azure wing of energy, Mora Cherry encircled them. She briefly saw a vibrating vortex of spinning spirals materialize in front of her, pouring her inward. She didn't resist its forceful current. As quickly as a flash of lightning brightening the right side, the back of West Room vanished, leaving the girl and her insects suspended in an inner stock ocean being carried away like driftwood on the swell. Hi, hello everyone. This is the Medic 2000 again. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Because, you know, I, I really did enjoy making it. But... So I hope you enjoyed it. Comment, like, and subscribe with the notifications on down below. Till next time, bye!